How many minutes? So it's four forty-seven. OMG, it's becoming a mini marathon. Hi Tiziana, how are you? Buonasera. What's next? One more, two more. Two more. OMG. Do you think that the world of academia and research, being scientific or cultural, has to always be connected to a wider audience? I might seem politically incorrect, but I think that high research is always must be niche, and reaching a wider audience shouldn't be the priority. The priority of research is the acquisition of knowledge and the growth of development in its field of study. Um, yeah, I, I can't agree and, and don't agree uh, to this point. I think it's, it's interesting. I definitely think that there must be research which doesn't necessarily initially have a, you know, a purpose or which doesn't necessarily have to reach out far. There has to be you know, research, into depth research, and that has to be, that has to continue. So I think in a way, you're absolutely right that this research has to be protected and we need to find ways and uh, possibility that, um, um, that also in the context of exhibition, you know, that research can continue to happen. So I agree to this point. I, did, I, I however don't completely agree that it always has to be like this. I think it's interesting that certain aspects of research, you know, have to happen without necessarily an immediate purpose. They have to happen without necessarily an immediate application. They have to happen without necessarily an immediate outreach. Uh, and yet at the same time, I believe that in history, there have always been attempts in this idea of being most advanced yet, you know, reaching out. And I think in a way it reminded me or made me think of more than reminded me, made me think of many, many conversations with uh, Anna Rob Grier, because um, at a certain moment, I strongly felt that it would be really important to connect art and literature more. When I visited him for the first time, he gave me this advice and I took this very seriously and started to curate exhibitions about art and literature in the locker house in Granada and many other places, a poetry marathon, at, the, um, at a certain time, more recently with Simon Caste, we curated this exhibition uh, about poetry at the Luma Foundation, which will now tour to the Moderna Museet in a completely new form with Daniel Birnbaum um, uh, in Stockholm. And uh, it is about the 89 plus generation, a generation of artists and practitioners born in 89 and younger. So it's a generation born after the Cold War. It's 89 is also the year when Tim Berners-Lee invented the internet, it's the year where the GPS was invented, it's the year of Tiananmen Square, uh, it's the year of many other things. And so in a way, uh, looking at that generation, it's obviously a way also of how curating can maybe change through the internet. So we have this database of almost 5,000 artists now, which we look at every day. We have, um, in this sense, submissions which come in from all over the world. Um, and uh, it, it's in this sense a more open process. We uh, and we obviously start to see pattern within that, within all of this work we're looking at. And one of the first pattern we recognized is this extraordinary vibrant energy there is in poetry. Uh, and in a way, I think it's really fascinating how this first sort of internet or, or digitally native generation is so incredibly active in poetry. There is a whole new uh, global discussion about poetry, the new poetry book of Andrew Durbin was just launched. I mean, that is a great, Andrew Durbin is a great example of an outstanding poet of that 89 plus generation. But there are many, many poets in that generation, you know, all over the world, you know, working. And we felt it would be important, together with Kenneth Goldsmith, of course, with Ubu Web. Uh, so Simon and I felt it would be important to do an exhibition which would sort of uh, render that. And uh, so we actually could see in this, you know, new generation of poetry also a desire to not necessarily just have uh, not only have a dialogue with a f you know a few other poets and with the poetry world but to again also connect it to other worlds and I think in a way it's kind of interesting I mean all these endeavors or exhibitions of of, uh, of connecting art and literature as Said Wombly had you know encouraged me with Lorca with Simon Caste the uh, no, 89 plus uh, Luma Foundation project now next step is at the Moderna Museet where we're going to have a tower, you know, a poetry tower, uh, further, you know, furthering this research. Um, we also have um, 
the, the project, uh, the Poetry Marathon at the Serpentine a couple of years ago in the Sejima uh, Pavilion. Uh, but a lot of these things were inspired also by Anna Rob Grier, who very often when we went on journeys together and I traveled a lot with him the last couple of years of his life and he was almost like my, my literature teacher, one could say. He was, I learned so much from him and, and, and he would always say, you know, if you look at the beginnings of Nouveau Roman and parallel to, to this, of course, the beginnings of the Nouvelle Vague in cinema and, you know, he talked about his collaboration with Alain René in, in Marienbad. He says there was a moment in, in the 60s, 50s, 60s you know, where actually there was a real desire to be most advanced, to make research, which is most advanced, and yet be somehow acceptable, but also to reach out. So not necessarily just to, to do research um, for a few specialists, but to somehow find ways to actually, you know, bridge that gap. And I think it's an interesting moment how now, through the internet, a new generation of artists and, and writers kind of connects maybe to that moment, obviously in a very, you know, different way. But to come back to, you know, to your question and related to curating, I think obviously it's absolutely necessary that we have, uh, um, that we liberate time and that there is into depth research, which is not necessarily immediately, you know, applicable. And I've always thought, you know, one possibility to do so is to develop research projects over 10, 20 years. I mean, Utopia Station, with Molly Nesbitt and Ricky Tiravanija has been ongoing now for 10 years, do it for 20 years. Uh, we conceived of 89 plus as a research project which will at last, you know, at least last 20 years. And so I think one possibility to kind of do that and sort of picking up on Alain Rob Grier's idea and he, he was always telling me that the one possibility was always to kind of not make a research immediately public, but to just show chapters. So he would always say, you know, he would sort of almost develop a novel by little by little releasing different chapters and publishing them in different contexts that all of a sudden he's got the novel. And so in a way, I try to apply this logic of Rob Grier to the exhibition and develop research projects over 10, 20 years where we will permanently open windows, uh, do public events, share also the stage of the research where we are you know, with the world and through that, you know, it would always allow us to continue and research more. And I think that's, you know, I'm not saying that that is the solution because far from this idea of being, you know, uh, making general recommendations, I think was the solution or is the solution for my own, you know, practice as a curator to, uh, to continue to make research in an environment where, you know, it may become more difficult to find someone who would allow us to just do research for 20 years without any results or without any purpose uh, and so to find a way how actually you know this can be a, a, a gradual you know a gradual process but I think there are many many more possibilities to do so and I think particularly you know whilst I agree with the premise of, of your question that we need to protect research I can't completely agree with this with this idea that it must always be only you know um, uh, in this more closed context because I think sometimes also it's interesting that we test results of such an into-depth research and and uh, and get it out in the world and, and learn from the you know from the from the feedback and and uh, and that's obviously something which has become much much easier also with uh, with the internet okay. I think one of the things which is also important in relation to your question Tiziana is grants I mean in a way I think we need more grants in the world. We need more stipends and grants. When I was 22, 23, um, and I never really had the possibility to do into depth research for longer because I was I had no money and I could only travel by night trains all over Europe, and it was very fragmented. And uh, the Cartier Foundation in 91 gave me for the first time a more stable grant. So I could for three months go to Paris and just do research and didn't have to have a day job. I could just do research. And, and in a way, these three months were completely transformative for me and allowed me to then continue to work in a very different way. And I arrived in Jouy en Josas. It's uh, interesting because in a way, uh, it was before the Cartier Foundation moved to Paris. I was in a, in a suburb outside Paris and uh, there were three artists in residence and one curator. So uh, I met the artist Absalon, who was my neighbor on the right, the uh, artist uh, Israel, who developed these amazing cells, architectural cells, and 
died very sadly, very young, and and uh, got a real vision of 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 a of an artist doing architecture, and yet at the same time, uh, another visionary artist, Huang Yongping, uh, uh, and Shen Yuan, you know, both amazing artists who had just arrived from China after Tiananmen Square, you know, in the early nineties, and. Uh, we would live there with Absalon, Huang Yangping, Shen Yuan for three months and I would always go and make studio visits and research in the evening would always exchange and it's been a life-changing experience for me this residency. I could also for the first time understand in 91, I mean I had just done the kitchen show but I could understand you know this whole polyphony of centers in the world because I was you know educated in Western and my research was mostly in Western art, and suddenly I'm there with one of the key protagonists of the Chinese avant-garde of the 80s, with Huang Yongping, who opens up this whole world, and you know, met obviously also there Hu Han Ru, and uh, met uh, uh, um, Fei Da Bi also, I don't know, very important early avant-garde shows of Chinese art, and uh, also Jen Sen, and uh, this whole Chinese art diaspora in Paris uh, with Huang Yongping, and in a way, I would say, you know, this, this grant was very transformative. So I do believe in this idea that it's extremely important to, to, to provide grants, grants for, for, for artists, grants, not only for artists, also grants for, because there are many grants for artists made, but there are very few grants for young emerging curators and art writers. And I think that is a very important thing for research that we, in the world, you know, uh, find more grants and more uh, research possibilities also for of course artists but also for curators and uh, and art writers.